Hi, this week's interview is with Liz Smith and I met Liz at Coffin Bay National Park in South Australia and she's travelling Australia with her husband and three children and they're from Achuka in New South Wales. Liz is a really warm and kind and nurturing person who I was really drawn to and her family, I just they're, they're just a beautiful family. And I really love this interview. So this interview takes place in her caravan in the Esperance, in a caravan park in Esperance, um, because it was too windy to, to do it outside. So this is a really lovely interview, and I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, so can you please tell us a bit about yourself and what has brought you here to Esperance? So my name's Liz. Um, a bit about myself. Well, I am married. I met my husband almost 20 years ago and we've been married for about 10 years and in that time we were living in Melbourne and we moved to Echuca, the country, and since moving to the country 10 years ago we got married and had three beautiful children. Um, my husband bought a business in Echuca which is why we were there. Um, so it's been a wonderful 10 years in Echuca, we've loved every minute of it. We moved up there with not knowing anybody and we've made just lifetime friends and we love it. Um, but then my husband came to me probably about 18 months ago and said to me, He's not really happy in his business. He sort of had found that he'd achieved what he needed to achieve and sort of said, oh, well, how would you feel if we sold the business? And, of course, for me it was like, well, he just needs to be happy. And that was really important for me that because if he's not happy, then the family, I believe the family's not happy. Um, and so, you know, I believe that things happen for a reason and the stars happened to align and there was a young man who wanted to buy my husband's business and so we sold it and... That was in August last year and then in, to in in line with that selling the business, we sort of thought, well, he's going to be without a job, for, which is the first time in his whole life. Mm -hmm. um, and so we thought, what can we do with that time? And we both have always wanted to travel. We love Australia. I haven't seen a lot of it. He's seen a bit of it, but not as much as me. And we thought, what an opportunity to take the kids around Australia. We love caravanning. We've made some very good friends caravanning. And so we just thought, well, let's just take the next seven and a half months off and see what there is to see out there. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Um, so what activities or hobbies make you content and bring you peace of mind? Um, there's lots of things that I like to do, whether I've got time for them or not. It's another, another story. I'm sure you can appreciate having yeah. a husband and three children, <laughs> and, and all my children are still very young. I've got mm. three children under, well, under eight now. Mm. Um, I really enjoy going to the gym. Um, it's, unfortunately, I haven't gone to the gym as much as I've liked, especially over the last two years, um, but I still really enjoy my yoga. I also enjoy social tennis. I'm not an excellent tennis player. I was when I was younger. Mm. Um, yes, yeah, so every Tuesday night I play tennis with my girlfriends, and it's just a time out for me. My kids actually come with me, but they've found their own little networks in the tennis community, and they go off and play, and I can happily play my tennis and just have that time, and I really love it. And I'm also part of a book club, um, and I join that. When my eldest, who's now eight, I joined that when she was three months old and it's probably been one of the best things that I have done. Um, it's just a young group of girls. We're all in similar positions. We've all got young families, husbands. We all work. We, you know, some have lost jobs, found jobs, you know, had husbands and left husbands. And it's just these great group of women that we love catching up with, that I love catching up with. Um, it's every eight weeks. Um, and in saying that, though, it is a book club, but I actually haven't read a book in two years. So um, but it's still a great opportunity for me to just to, go out with these young people, these young women. Um, and now in saying that, though, I've already read two books since I've been away. So, yeah, yeah so they're the things that I really enjoy yeah. doing. So it turned into more like a social club. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. Every eight weeks yeah. and it came around like that. And, and actually the, the girls in the, my, book, my book club actually aren't girls besides one of them aren't girls that I would catch up socially, mm -hmm. just regularly. So yeah. it's actually quite nice to just meet up with other people who I don't see regularly to yeah. see what's happening in their lives and the challenges that they have and the good things about them and their jobs and their children and all yeah. that. So, yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, that yep. sounds really good. Yep. Uh, what are three things you are grateful for? Mm. Um, lots of things, actually, in my life I'm grateful for. Um, first, my family. I really love my family. I love that I've got them. Mm -hmm. um, my own, my so my family, which is my husband and my three children, my my dad and my sister and my brother. There, yeah, I'm very grateful for them, and I'm also grateful mm -hmm. for my friends. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Who or what inspires you, and why? 
Hmm, it's a really interesting question. Um, I want to say someone famous. I'm not sure if anyone yeah. famous actually inspires me though. Oh. Um, it could be anybody. Hmm, I don't really know who inspires me. I probably haven't even worked that out. There's lots mm -hmm. of people who I come across in my life and I think, oh gosh, they're doing well or um, I really like what they're doing. Um, I don't know, my, I think my dad inspires me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know who else. Why does he inspire you? Um, just because he's really nice mm -hmm. and he raised my myself, I'm the youngest of three, so my, myself, my sister, my brother, my mum passed away when I was very young mm -hmm. and I just, yeah, he's just done really well and he lives a happy life and he's got a great job and he's got a great wife now and yeah, you see, he, I think he's sort of instilled in us children um, that life is short and you just need to yeah, just enjoy it and be with it and whatever goes, goes. But you got to give things a try and yeah, that's I think that's just sort of exactly advice. what you're doing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although he's on a camper. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the best piece of advice you have been given, or a quote that resonates with you? Um, there's probably two. Mm -hmm. One's probably not applicable to all, but I remember when I was about to go into birth. <laughs> <laughs> with my first daughter, Lucy, and obviously being the first child, I have no idea about childbirth and what yeah. goes on. And one of my dearest friends said to me, this is probably not really appropriate, but it's one of those things that just sticks with you, and she said, um, when you feel that burning ring of fire, it's almost done. The pain's almost over and you'll get the enjoyment. And I still remember that feeling in my, in my first labour yeah. of having Lucy, and I got to that point and had that feeling, and I just, I just remember it. Mm -hmm. And now I often, when I see women who are having their first child and they always say, oh, what's it like, what's it like? And it's the only thing I say to them. And yeah. So it's something that just always sticks with me. Yeah. And the other thing that I think always sticks with me is, you know, there's all that to talk about, don't sweat the small stuff and things like that, but I often talk to my, to my friends about but I also have to, to make myself think about it, is that when I'm 80 or 70 or 80 or 90, if I'm lucky enough to get to 90, I have no doubt that I'll look back on my life and go, Oh, it's not about oh, I didn't get that washing done or the house wasn't clean. So I'm really mindful of that now because I don't yeah. want to get to being 80 or 90 to say I worried about all those things. So yeah. that's not, it's not really a quote, but it's sort of my slow, a way of living in terms of when I am that old, I want to be able to look back and go, I did live a really good life and I you know, enjoyed my friends and my family and whatever, and I was really social and whatever, and yeah, I'm sure that all the boring house tasks got done. Yeah. But it's just about that, yeah, that quote about when I'm... No, no, when I'm 90 or 80, that I haven't worried about those things. Yeah. So yeah. something just always... That's goes. something I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> and you have to, yeah, that's right. You have to yeah. learn. I think you really have to yeah. learn it. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't come naturally. You yeah. have to just keep reminding yourself, yeah. like, that's right, that's right, that's yeah. right. Um, if you had no financial work or responsibility constraints, what would you wake up and do tomorrow? I don't know actually because I really like working. Mm -hmm. Like I really enjoy working and I'm 42 and it actually it's taken me a long time to work out what I've wanted to do. I've been through many jobs in my life since I yeah, I left school and I went to university and I fell out of university studying the course that I was at that time and I've done many, many, many jobs since then. And at 40 I decided that I actually wanted to, I think I've always done I wanted to be a social worker but have never had the probably the confidence or the experience or the, the timing to actually go and do a course. And, you know, obviously social work's a four-year degree. I never had that time. So when I was 40, I decided to do a diploma in youth work. Um, and so I finished that in May last year. So my intentions are when my youngest is in probably grade one or grade two is to go on and complete my diploma of youth, mm -hmm. um, sorry, my social work degree. Um, so I actually think that I'll always like, even if I was to wake up tomorrow with no job, what did you say? No, no responsibility, no responsibility whatsoever. I think I'd like to go to work. Yeah, okay. Like I love waking up with my family and having breakfast and doing all those things. And I love sending my children off to school not only because it gives me time out but also because it's their education and they're building their own friendship circles. Mm. But I actually find it really important for me to work and yeah. I really enjoy – In the, I've just started working in family services at our local hospital, mm -hmm. um, working with young families who, you know, need some assistance in – you know, trying to get a better life or to try and gain better services 
and I actually quite like that. So I find that really fulfilling. So I think it, um, even if I didn't have to go to work or uh, didn't have any responsibilities, I still think I'd work. You do. Yeah. That's a really good place to be. Yeah, it is. And a really rare place but to be. But I'm 42, be. so yeah. it's taken me a long time to get there. But you, yeah, yeah. But you're there though. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are you most proud of in your life? Um, what am I most proud of? Um, probably my, obviously my children. Mm -hmm. um, very lucky and very fortunate that I was have um, had had three children. Mm -hmm. um, it took actually a long time to have three children. So mm -hmm. I, I battled with a lot of miscarriages at the start. So at a time then my husband and I actually thought we couldn't have children mm -hmm. or wouldn't be able to, yeah, I wouldn't be able to carry a child. So to go on and have three children is actually a blessing and we feel very fortunate to have that. Mm. Um, and what else? What was the question? The, what was I? Uh, what are you most proud of proud in of, your yeah. life? Um, and just my friends. Like, I've built these great friends. Like, mm. yeah, I think it's really important in life to have friends. Yeah, yeah. So I'm happy. I'm really proud of the networks that I've created and the things that I do and the I'm also at home. I'm part of the a, part of a girls' night out committee, which is raises money for uh, local families living with cancer. Yeah, yeah. And I love it. Like you know, so I moved to Echuca ten years ago, which is a smaller town outside of Melbourne. But I joined these group of girls, another group of girls who are wonderful, and we all work together and try and raise money for these families who are living with cancer, who mm -hmm. struggle every day and who can't afford to you know pay their rent or yeah. have to go to Melbourne for treatment. Yeah. And so that's, I'm really proud of being yeah. involved with that as well and actually yeah, really making cool. really significant changes and actually helping people who live in our community. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's through the Cancer Council. No, 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 it's just we just do it. It's just a group of girls oh, in okay. our local. Oh, okay. Yeah. I used to work with Cancer Council. Oh, uh, yeah, and right. a girls' night out too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, so we actually get, you yeah. know, you're saying yes, we are, we got that We got that name from that because originally oh, okay. we started yeah. sort of with that thought. Yeah. Um, but that was 10 years ago. Yeah, okay. And the original, the original founding member of the group actually passed away from cancer. Oh, yeah. And one of our latest members is a breast cancer survivor, and right. she's only 20, no, sorry, 30. I think she's 35 now. Oh, goodness. So I just worked with another extraordinary group of young we yeah. women, and I just love it. I love helping the community. And, yeah. you know, when you know, I think more so when you live in a small community, it's even more important that you help out in that community. Yeah. So I'm proud yeah. of that. Yeah. What are you most scared of? Um, probably leaving my children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty scary thought. Uh, what does living a meaningful life look like to you? Um, a meaningful life, probably doing this, what we're doing, mm -hmm. traveling, road, traveling, yep. yep, in the van. Um, it's meaningful because it's not forever as well for us. Like yeah. we obviously have intention, we have to go back to work. Yeah. And, um, so it's meaningful in the fact that we know it's for a short time. So it's a different appreciation to what you do. Um, and I really think a fortunate life is having friends and family. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's yeah. what it, that's what it means to me. Yeah. Uh, what do you want to be remembered for, and your legacy to be? Oh, gosh. Wow. Um, my legacy. Um, probably that I was just a nice person. Yeah. Okay, last, last one. Last question. What is something you will do today or tomorrow to bring you contentment and peace of mind? Um, tomorrow morning I'll go for a walk on the beach mm -hmm. and I'll probably stop for about 15 minutes and do some yoga, do some stretching, yep. um, come back and I like the idea of doing some push-ups and sit-ups but I'm not sure if that will happen but definitely going for a walk yep. um, and doing some food shopping. Yep. It's really boring but we have no food. <laughs> <laughs> we have no food and it's actually I like, I'm very much a like, I'm trying to change but I'm not, I probably never, will never change. I do like a list and I do like to tick things off. Yeah. So, um, you know, even though there are these beautiful things to go for a walk and that's really nice and I'll love it, but also my head will go right by also need to get these things done. And, yes, probably they're not really that important, but I do feel some contentment, contentment yeah. going, right, yep, I've done the shopping, I've gone for my walk. Um, so actually, one of my highlights of my whole day, every day, everything that I do, every day of my life is have a coffee in the morning. That yeah. is one of my simple pleasures. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. I have it at home, but I don't spend any money. I make my own coffee, and um, I love it. And I'm just very grateful for my morning coffee. Yeah.
Well, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>